A bold and visionary military project emerged from the Philippines, symbolizing the nation's capacity for innovation in defense technology. Known as Project Sumpac, this endeavor aimed to develop a homegrown multiple rocket launcher MRL, system that would provide the Philippine Armed Forces AFP, with a uniquely tailored solution to national defense. At its core was the Sumpac 2.75, a modular rocket launcher system developed by the Philippine Air Force Special Research and Development Group PAFSDRDG, designed to be mobile, versatile, and locally manufactured. Had it reached its full potential, Project Sumpac might have propelled the Philippines into a new era of military self-sufficiency. The development of the MK-40 Sumpac was an unprecedented move in Philippine military history. This system was envisioned as a trailer-mounted, jeep-compatible multiple rocket launcher capable of firing 2.75-inch rockets in rapid succession. The idea was revolutionary, it would allow the AFP to deliver high volumes of firepower quickly and efficiently. By mounting the launcher on standard military jeeps, the Sumpac could be deployed across challenging terrains typical of the archipelago. This level of mobility was key for the AFP, enabling quick redeployment across the Philippines' many islands to respond to emerging threats with minimal setup time. Designed in 1981, the MK-40 Sumpac was a product of the times. The early 1980s marked a shift in global military technology toward lighter, faster, and more mobile systems. Many nations were exploring new methods to bolster firepower without the need for heavy, cumbersome artillery systems. With the Sumpac, the Philippines was not only keeping pace with global military advancements but showing potential to contribute uniquely innovative solutions, tailored to the nation's specific needs. The Sumpac 2.75 was more than just a weapon, it was a strategy in and of itself. The system's rapid-fire capability offered flexibility in defense and counter-offensive actions. In the event of conflict, the Sumpac could deploy rockets to saturate target areas, supporting ground forces and fortifying defensive lines. Its design highlighted the importance of indigenous innovation, producing something specifically suited for the local landscape and security needs, unlike imported systems that often required extensive adjustments and training to integrate into Philippine forces. But what really set Project Sumpac apart was its ability to empower the Philippine military's logistical and operational independence. Unlike systems that relied on imported parts and foreign expertise, the Sumpac 2.75 could be manufactured domestically. It was an embodiment of Filipino ingenuity and a step towards self-reliance. Local manufacturing would mean reduced dependency on foreign suppliers, faster production times, and more control over costs. However, this ambitious project met an untimely fate. The early 1980s were marked by political upheaval, economic instability, and a series of events that reshaped the Philippine government and military landscape. By 1986, the People Power Revolution had overthrown the Marcos regime, ushering in a new era of governance focused on rebuilding the nation's political and economic structures. Amid this transition, many defense projects, including Project Sumpac, were reassessed or cut entirely. For Project Sumpac, the new government's priorities had shifted toward domestic welfare and infrastructure rather than defense spending. Resources were redirected, and enthusiasm for military innovation dwindled in the face of mounting social needs. Unfortunately, the Sumpac 2.75 became a casualty of this change, eventually left as a shelved prototype and a chapter in the nation's history that was never fully realized. Looking back, the discontinuation of Project Sumpac represents more than just the end of a single military project. It marked the loss of a moment in time when the Philippines could have made a bold statement on the global stage. Had Project Sumpac continued, the Philippines could have established a foundation for a locally developed defense industry, one that might have evolved into a hub for indigenous technology, engineering talent, and potentially even exportable defense solutions. With ongoing refinements, a second generation of Sumpac launchers might have emerged, incorporating advanced targeting systems, larger rocket capabilities, or even more adaptable vehicle platforms. This could have positioned the Philippines as a regional innovator in military technology, setting the stage for future defense projects aimed at making the country more self-sufficient. In an alternate history where Project Sumpac thrived, the Philippines today might not just be a buyer of foreign military technology but a competitive player in defense production, supplying Southeast Asia and beyond with affordable, effective rocket systems and artillery solutions. While Project Sumpac remains a, what if, in Philippine history, 
its story is a potent reminder of what is possible. It shows that Filipino engineers, scientists, and military personnel have the creativity, resourcefulness, and dedication needed to drive meaningful innovation. As the AFP enters a new phase of modernization with the support of allied nations, Project SUMPAC serves as a call to future generations of military leaders and engineers. That the path to a strong defense lies not only in buying equipment but in building and innovating it ourselves. This legacy holds vital lessons for today. By investing in research, cultivating local talent, and fostering an environment that supports bold ideas, the Philippines can unlock its potential for defense independence. Modern challenges, territorial disputes, cyber threats, and humanitarian crises, call for solutions that are not only powerful but tailored to the Philippines' unique environment and resources. Indigenous projects like SUMPAC demonstrate that self-sufficiency in defense is not only achievable but beneficial to national security and economic growth alike. The dream that inspired Project SUMPAC lives on, urging current leaders to reignite that ambition. Today, as the AFP collaborates with nations like Japan, South Korea, and the United States on defense modernization, there is a renewed opportunity to push for Philippine-made innovations. Just as the SUMPAC 2.75 aimed to strengthen the Philippines' national defense with local talent, future projects can continue this vision, striving for a military that is self-sufficient, responsive, and adaptable to the country's unique challenges. With the right investments, policies, and vision, the Philippines can one day produce advanced, locally-made systems, whether in rocketry, cybersecurity, or maritime defense. This commitment would not only serve to protect the country but also boost national pride, create jobs, and inspire a culture of innovation. Future generations of Filipinos would look back on Project SUMPAC not only as a what if, but as the moment that sparked a lasting legacy in military innovation. In the end, Project SUMPAC remains a powerful symbol of Filipino potential. While it never saw full implementation, its spirit endures, proving that the Philippines has the talent, the ideas, and the drive to pioneer its own defense solutions. Let this be a call to action for today's leaders, that with determination, investment, and vision, the Philippines can indeed stand shoulder to shoulder with the world's best in defense technology. The dream of a strong, self-sufficient defense is not only possible but within reach, if we dare to keep pushing forward. The story of Project SUMPAC is not just a tale of what might have been, it's a legacy and an ongoing challenge for a brighter, more resilient future. The question remains. Will we pick up where it left off and carry this vision to new heights?